Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King book review. Today, we are talking about Hearts in Atlantis. Um, this is a great book right off the bat. If you're sitting there wondering, hasn't he already reviewed this? No, I have not. Um, I have a written review on Goodreads, but I've never done a video uh, review of it. What you're probably thinking about is my series Thursday Theorist where I connect all of Stephen King's books to the Dark Tower and the Stephen King universe in general. Um, this one uh, has a, a film adaptation of only the first uh, novella, I guess you'd call it. We're going to talk about that in just a second, how uh, this book is structured. Um, it's with Anthony Hopkins. I can't remember any of the other actors. And I liked it all right, but it's not one of the more memorable ones, at least not for me. And they had to change so much about it because it ties into the Dark Tower um, so, so drastically. It's still a good... It's still a good movie. Um, I would probably give it three, three and a half stars. Um, Anthony Hopkins is, of course, as great as he usually is. But back to the book. Um, there is some discussion about whether or not this book is a collection of stories um, or if it is a mosaic novel. I am on the side of mosaic novel because there is, that for one simple reason, this is the only Stephen King collection without a table of contents. Um, in fact, because of that, I have problems remembering the titles of each and every story, so if I'm glancing at the book, I apologize. But the the first novella, in fact, Wikipedia says that it is a uh, collection of two novellas and three short stories. I think they get progressively shorter over time, if I remember correctly. The last time I read this was in audiobook format, so I'm still not 100% sure on, you know, what stories are what lengths. But the first one, Low Men in Yellow Coats, I hope I'm getting that right. Um, if you're a Dark Tower fan, you already recognize uh, the uh, Low Men. But the first novella is about uh, Ted Brodigan, who pops up a lot in the later Dark Tower books. Um, well, not a lot, but he, he pops up. He has a pretty significant role in, I believe, it's the final one. Um, I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but I think that's spoiler enough just saying that he pops up in the series. Uh, it's very interesting how uh, King worked him in, but the story pretty much revolves around Bar Bobby Garfield, who is a little boy at the time that he meets Ted, and this is a recurring uh, theme or scenario in Stephen King's books where a young person will meet a uh, older person and someone is basically grandfather, grandmother age and be, and comes to friend them. You have uh, Mr. Harrigan's phone, you have apt pupil, you, there's so many like this and I'm wondering who that person was for King when he was growing up. Um, I don't think I've ever heard him talk about it so if you guys can share any interviews or anything where he might talk about it, it just seems uh, odd that it's such a recurring thing Thing for him to have not had uh, an, an older figure in his life, um, him also growing up without his father, you know, who, who was that person that he latched on to um, that was an older adult when he was a young boy? Was there one at all? I don't know. Um, the rest of the story uh, revolves around the, uh, I believe, the before, during, and after of the Vietnam War. Um, and it's a mosaic novel in the sense that each and every story is from a different main character's point of view, but it also includes the main character from the previous stories. My favorite story in here is the first one. That's probably why I remember it so well. Um, the other ones are, let's see here, you got uh, Hearts in Atlantis is the second one. I remember that. It's not even mentioned in, uh, in this one, but it's a group... It, revolves around a, a group of college kids playing hearts um, well, in, in college. Uh, that one, I don't, I don't remember a whole much, uh, a whole lot about that one. Um, it's, and in fact, the rest of the story is pretty forgettable for me. Um, I went back and read my review on Goodreads, and that was uh, pr probably the complete opposite of what I'm saying now. But the one that really sticks with me is the opening one, and that's probably because I've done so much reading and research into the Dark Tower series that I'm more fascinated with the Ted Brodigan character than I am any 
anything else. Um, I'm not going to go through the other stories because, like I said, I don't have that great of a memory of them, but I do recommend this book, um, if for nothing else, for the opening novella. King really shines when he's writing about young people and older people. Um, right, right there in the middle, he has some great middle-aged characters, but I think where he he really shows off his talents is when he's writing about, well, young chill, young people of a certain era um, kind of deal. Uh, new, newer kids he, he, he does struggle with sometimes. Um, I think it's because he doesn't have too many... Uh, people around him that are that age. Uh, and if your only view of the world, uh, of the world of young adults is something like Twitter or the internet, then you're just not seeing all of it. And I think that's part of where uh, some of the awkwardness um, and the cliched young characters for nowadays comes from. I don't know. I could be way off the mark. Um, but I know there was a lot of talk about how um, the kids in the Institute uh, didn't act like kids. Um, I thought they did. Uh, they they were all hyper intelligent children, and smart kids tend to talk like that. And smart kids tend to be very cringy and awkward and uh, not very or too self aware. Maybe is that, and they they realize their faults. Um, but uh, yeah, so th that's that's my two cents on uh, King writing uh, kids, but. This one, I, I do remember there's, uh, I believe there's one of the stories revolves around a vet who's homeless. Now, this could be a Mandela effect. I don't know. Um, and it, of course, wasn't in the movie because they only did the first, uh, the first one, the first novella. Um, but I remember enjoying that one. I really do need to reread this book and give it a proper review. But if you're looking for more of an in-depth review, I'll leave a link down to my Goodreads review down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but I'm giving this one, off the top of my head, four stars simply because of the first novella. And my question for you today is how do you look at this collection? Do you look at it as a collection or do you look at it as a, as a novel, as a mosaic novel? Um, like I said, I have, I have, I'm on the side of the fence that it is a mosaic novel, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, also, whether or not you like the book, leave all that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.